Hi, I'm Lisa Cohn. And I'm John Conley, and we both work in the evaluation team in Health Scotland. This is the first in a series of four presentations on outcomes planning. This presentation is a resource developed by Health Scotland for people within and outside the organisation to use when thinking about planning their work, with the goal of demonstrating impact of our projects and programmes at a number of levels. The presentation is a brief introduction to outcomes planning. This input is timely for us in Health Scotland in light of a corporate, our corporate strategy, A Fairer Healthier Scotland, which requires us to demonstrate the difference we are making to reducing health inequalities in Scotland. So what is outcome focused planning? Outcomes planning is the process by which we determine what outcomes we aim to achieve. What all outcomes focused approaches have in common is that the emphasis are on change, impact and the actual difference that you make rather than solely focusing on what is produced. It should be a team exercise in order to get buy-in or a shared understanding across partners of the intended outcomes and how we want to achieve them. Immediate and wider stakeholders need to be identified who can help in this process. For example, when working out an outcomes plan, it's best to start with a small group of influential and relevant stakeholders who will draft the plan and then share it with a wider audience to review and refine. An outcomes chain can be illustrated by a series of boxes and arrows that are a sequence of key steps. Long-term outcomes are aspirational and they are usually population-based. Your service or programme can only have an indirect influence over these outcomes as they are subject to many other external influences and possibly many other services and can only hope to be changed through collective effort, for example through partnership working. Direct influence is when the groups that use the outputs and, and the short term outcomes. So this refers to changes in knowledge and skills that can be directly attributed to your service. Some elements of the chain are within your direct control. These are the visible elements of the program, for example the activities you undertake and the things that are produced. An outcomes chain can also be described as a logic model, which help in planning programmes and in defining how to measure the success of the programme. Although the arrows on the slide go from left to right, ideally in outcomes focused planning, we should work backwards from right to left. We should start by agreeing the outcomes we want to achieve and then identify in a logical way how we intend to achieve them, based, where possible, on evidence. This helps to ensure that each step is plausible, realistic and accounts for external factors which may influence the outcomes. Outcome, ch outcome chains and logic models will be discussed in more detail in the third presentation in the series. There are a number of benefits of outcomes planning. For example, it allows a shared understanding of the issues that need to be addressed. It also allows for an assessment of the partnership contributions required to deliver outcomes. And it focuses on continuous improvement by emphasising performance, monitoring and learning. Outcomes planning has become an integral part of the National Performance Framework and is a major driver from the Scottish Government. This means that all bodies must be accountable for what they do, how they spend money and what impact they are making. This triangle represents an overall strategic illustration of the context of health improvement and what we are ultimately aiming to achieve in terms of reducing inequalities and improving the overall health and well-being of the Scottish population. However, the activities we undertake and the outcomes we aim to achieve do not exist in a vacuum. We are influenced and affected by wider political, economic, social and environmental factors that may be out with our control. For example, public policy developments, government targets and cultural and societal change. It is important to recognise the waterline on the triangle which differentiates between the whole system outcomes, which are above the blue waterline, and the service delivery outcomes, which are below the line. So this provides an illustration of how programmes and projects can contribute to high level change at a societal and population level. To summarise, outcomes planning helps us to demonstrate the impact of what we do at a number of levels. Outcomes planning is a participatory process and it is influenced by the wider context. Please see the second presentation which considers the key terms and definitions in relation to outcomes planning.